Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with another one day build. Uh, and this one, we're doing some skill expansion today. We're trying something I have not done before very much at all. Okay, uh, so to give some context, uh, a little while ago I turned my portable bandsaw into a benchtop little bandsaw. And during the, the filming, I was taking a bolt and machining it and threading its end to be a smaller type of bolt. And I was saying on camera, oh, I could cut these threads with the lathe, but that's a little more involved than I can do. And the fact is, I know how to thread on the lathe. I've just not done it a ton and I'm not super comfortable with it. Well, today we're going to be using the thread cutting ability of this beautiful tool because I'm gonna take this chunk of brass and I'm gonna make one of these, but I'm gonna make it really, really large. <sighs> this will be really fun. There's actually a really good reason to do a project like this for your own portfolio. And I will explain. Um, if you come to me with a, a, a book full of things that you've made that you've also designed, I know that you think you're showing me, the interviewer, what you can do. But what you really want to do in an interview is you not only want to show what you can do, you want to show what you can do for the person interviewing you. And as someone who hires people, when you show me a bunch of work that you've designed and built, I don't know what you started with as a, as a goal. So I don't know how close you got to that goal. These beautiful found object pieces you show me, this random interviewee, interviewee uh, that they show me, uh, they might be gorgeous, but I, I don't know how hard or easy it was for them to make. So if you put something in your portfolio that the person interviewing you knows exactly what it should look like, well, now you've actually, you've made real progress. So if you bring to me uh, a giant brass nut and bolt, then Hell's bells, Margaret. I know that you know how to replicate something exactly, and I can see the fidelity that you brought to bear on this project. Um, so there's actually a really good reason to explore things like this. You know, it's a big dumb nut and bolt, sure, but um, yeah, it's actually a really good explanation of the technical skill base of the person who made it. Here's what I want to do. This is my biggest chunk of brass that I have in the shop. It is two and three quarter inches in diameter. And even though it has a hole in either end, uh, it is about, let's see, that's just about half an inch. And that's about three quarters, so it's about an inch and a, let's see here. Yeah, I get about, it looks like I would be able to get about a five, a five inch bolt and a single nut out of this chunk. But I want to follow this exactly. Uh, I want to follow its proportions and its dimensions of the threads, etc. So I'm going to do a little bit of math right now. So let's see here. All right. Uh, so we're going to have a bolt. That's a nut. And then we're gonna have <sighs> okay, so A B. C, A equals B equals C equals, uh, it's 2.75 over, I need three dimensions, so 2.75, uh, and the original is 0.85. Okay, we have our marching orders. We have some marks on the brass that I think get me a reasonable size bolt. Let's get to machining. 
I think the very first thing I need to do to this is actually cut the hexagon out of, uh, cut six flats off of this two and three quarter inch rod of brass in order to make the hexagonal top of the bolt. And to do that, I'm actually gonna use a dividing head and a tailstock. I have a tailstock for my dividing head, but I've never used it. That's gotta be the, the, the very first step. I, I uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is tricky, I have it to work in this large is uh, non-trivial. Let's get started. So this here is, that's my dividing head. It's got a four jaw self-centering chuck here. Uh, this is the tailstock and the plan is to take this hunk of brass, slip it in there, brace it with the tailstock once I've clamped it in and then turn this every uh, 60 degrees to mill the flats for the hex head on this. However, this, is too wide for that. So first I have to chuck this into the lathe and mill down its other side a little bit to be able to be held by these chuck jaws. I think they go to just a shade. I think they're two and a half and I have two and three quarters. So I have to just take a quarter inch off of that. Um, once I have that all balanced and everything, I'll throw an indicator on it to make sure everything is perfectly horizontal and perpendicular and square and linear, etc. All right, so I've, I've hit a snag in that the tailstock of my lathe decided to crap the bed uh, at the little bolt it uses to tighten up against the rails of my lathe. So, <sighs> I gotta fix that first. Might take me a few minutes. So uh, I've got my big piece of brass turned down. This will be the threaded part. That will be the top of the bolt. That will be the nut. I'm going to mill the hex on the big nut and bolt part all at once. I've included some relief here for the other side of the threads as I cut them. I may make that relief a little deeper later, but we will see. Uh, and right now I'm about to chuck it right into this guy. Yeah, I know I said it was only gonna take off a little bit and then I realized I could turn this down to its uh, critical dimension and then I'm good. Yeah, all right, so. Now uh, it's time to mill these flats. Now I have turned down the six hexagonal sides. They're nice and smooth. I got this really nice new facing head and I'm really happy with it. Uh, I am going to take this out of here and uh, chuck it into the lathe and start to work on the threads for this guy. So a uh, cursory view of my rotary head and steady rest make it clear what I've got going on. The rotary head here can turn anywhere from horizontal to vertical in any angle in between. I can read that angle here. I would probably, if it was mission critical, confirm it with a sign plate. I have my whole pattern here uh, for doing gear divisions. Right now this sits on uh, the three part of a one, two, three block. So three inches off the ground and that allows my steady rest to be dead center. Now my steady rest isn't necessarily perfectly 100% dead center, but that's okay because I just needed it to be the steadying force. Uh, it's really like the amount of force on this cutter on these faces is quite large. And so you bolt everything down to, uh, to eliminate all that chatter. I love this dividing head. I'm really pleased with its compact size. And uh, well, the more I work with the lathe, the more I really like using all the clamp down systems. Okay, so I have my bolt fleshed out here. Again, this is going to be both the head of the bolt and the nut, but I'm keeping them together for right now. Actually, it may almost be time for me to, to cut them apart. Eh. At any rate, very soon I'm gonna cut these two things apart. I'll hollow out the inside of the nut 
and then it is time to cut the threads on the bolt. And when I did the math between a half inch bolt at 13 threads per inch to a 1.6 inch bolt, I get four threads per inch. Now, let me show you how a machine lathe cuts a specific number of threads per inch. Okay, so these are all the knobs and levers for adjusting the speed of my lathe. Now up here, I've got your main speeds, X, W, Z, Y, and I have a chart here that shows me what those speeds are. And I can change those speeds high or low depending on what material I'm working with and how much I'm cutting them. But when I wanna do thread cutting on there, I am going to go for this chart. Now I said I want four threads per inch. So I look up four threads per inch and it is right there. And there's a code to the right and it says HB7P. So there's H, let's see. Okay, we're set at H, B. Oh, we're already on seven, great, and P. As for this guy, I don't think this really matters. What all of these do is they actually adjust. How do I sit? How do I put this? Okay, um, inside this carriage is a half a pair of half nuts that will grab this lead screw. So if I'm spinning it, and I ooh yeah, I don't want to. Uh, hold on. Thread cutting and having the settings wrong is absolutely the way you can crash your machine and you don't want to crash your machine. So I'm gonna run it really slow. There we go. Okay, so now I'm running it in turtle mode, super slow. And you'll see what happens. This lead screw is turning and when I push this lever down, it moves the carriage. Yeah, and it moves the carriage exactly the distance for cutting four threads per inch. I know that's abstract. You'll understand it when I'm actually doing it in person. I have the, the uh, what do you call it? The base platform for the nut, and I've got the bolt. So uh, now I'm going to face the back of the bolt, and make it the same size as the nut, uh, and then I will chuck it in and cut the threads on this. Once I have the threads cut for this, then I can cut the internal threads for the nut. Okay, uh, here's the magic time. I am about to set up to cut threads on this lathe. Uh, that is me having set very carefully this 60 degree cutter so that it is perfectly square with my work. Uh, I will now go through the process of, ooh, ah, that's not gonna work. Right, I see. So I won't get all the way there. I have to come out a little bit. Nope. So the whole thing about cutting threads is that you do it slowly and piecemeal, pass by pass. So there, ah, okay. I think I have a thing I can do here. 
Oh, no. I can't. Wait a second. Okay, so here's what I've got. I've got a 60 degree cutter, perfectly aligned, perpendicularly with the work. This is what's going to be the threaded bolt. And I've got my half nut locked on the gear train. So when I turn the machine on, you should see this thing cut a little line all the way across. And that line should be four threads per inch. So here we go. Now you see it's cutting the same line it was cutting before. Yep, and this is it. You just keep on cutting. Yep, that's how thread cutting works. Yep, it seems like 20 thousandths is about the sweet spot. Yeah. Okay. I got greedy. Here's what happens when you get greedy on the lathe. You try to take off too much material with each pass. I'm going to stop being greedy. My big bolt was marred. The sides of it were marred in that accident on the lathe. The lathe is fine. I'm fine. I was going very slow. I'm recutting it. Now I'm doing it like 10 thou to pass going very calm, getting back into it. So this is day two of this one day build and the shop, as you can see, is a little bit of a mess and that describes the state of my head as well. Um, I, I, I'm pushing my skill limit and when you do that, that's when you make the mistakes that are useful, right? Like they're not pleasant, but Everyone makes them, right? So I'm trying to thread this big brass bolt. And look, this looks really good. It didn't feel really good yesterday when I <sighs> screwed it up repeatedly. Um, and it feels like... <sighs> it's complicated, right? I'm not happy with how this went yesterday. Um, but I can see that I will end up with something beautiful. I, I will tell you one thing I have learned. There's a, there's a thing that people who work with metal often say about brass is that it's often, they say brass is really grippy. And the fact is I've never experienced that, but I think that's because I've never worked with a chunk of brass this big before. And now I really get what is being said about brass being grippy. All that is by way of saying, I've been looking for the silver linings of screwing this build up and of my limitations of my machining skills. And I have to understand and admit that this is part of the process. Like every machinist, every machine operator has these stories of stuff they built that didn't go the way they expected or stuff they thought would be easy that turned out to be way harder. That's what I'm experiencing here. All this is the longest possible way of saying while I am not going to achieve what I set out to achieve uh, in terms of the original size and proportions of the bolt that I wanted to make, I will achieve something by the end of today. Okay, uh, I have repaired the head for the fourth time and just to show you how much repair I've done, here is the size of the head as it was originally supposed to be and you see I've lost like 20%, right? That was the... That was the size of the original head, and each time I screw it up, I have to peel a little bit off. <sighs> I also 
uh, fix the neck here. Uh, so my surfaces are back to being good. The re bolt's relationship between the head size and the, the thread size is now way off, but that is what it is. That's just part of the process. Uh, this piece of aluminum here is an old piece I had from the making of some spacesuit parts that I'm using as a holder uh, so that I don't damage the threads. I'm going to actually chuck this back into the lathe and add a chamfer around here. On bolts like this, you'll notice that there's a, a chamfer on the top. See that? But not on the bottom. Yeah, so we're gonna do the same thing on ours. We're gonna add a chamfer across the whole top. Should I add the chamfer before I make sure that the threads are good? Hmm. It's a good question. I think I make the threads good first. I think I have to make the threads good first. That That's the next thing. Uh, specifically, because then I don't waste if I screw it up a fifth time, which certainly could happen, then I haven't wasted the time to add that chamfer. Okay. <sighs> the way I'm gonna fix the front of this is I'm actually gonna cut off the damaged part and uh, machine it down. You'll see. Okay, so this should give me some really positive grab. Let's just see how even that is. Not bad, not bad. Okay. So, let us chamfer. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chamfer this See if we can't get past this part. This is the worst part. Actually, I'm gonna try facing the end first. Okay. I have fixed my bolt. It's a fixed bolt. Uh, this is done in its shaping on the mill and the lathe. And I must admit, it's lovely. I'm very pleased. It's not what I set out to make. It's different in a lot of ways, but I'm taking what I can get. Now it's time to make the nut that screws onto this. That may be the next hour or it may be the next six hours. I'm not exactly. So the first thing to know about threads is that there are two sizes in every thread. There's the, there's the internal size, there's that size, and then there's the external size of the threads. And obviously, if I'm going to be drilling a hole in this brass hexagon to fit this, I need to start with the smallest size. And so I'm just going to measure that with my calipers and I can get Looks like I can get within a few thousandths of this. Uh, and now I'm going to say that's 1.125. Look at that. It's 1.135. Uh, Ten thousandths over one and an eighth. That's actually kind of awesome. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 1.135. That's the hole I need to put in here. I'm using the aluminum to protect the brass so I can grab it nice and heartily with my lathe chuck and not actually damage the brass. Yes. I think we're not going to pull this out of here until we have threads in it. The faces are good. The size is good. I may take the sides down later, but first I gotta drill that hole. So let's do a one inch bit. What I'm doing here is I'm slowly creeping up. I'm increasing the bore size by an eighth of an inch every single time.
Okay, I have the hole. It is set to the smallest depth of my threading, which is 1.125, and I actually think it's about 10 thousandths over. So now I'm gonna start cutting the internal threads. It looks like this, there it is. That's your 60 degree angle, and I'm going to feed this over and into the hole. So it'll look like this. Yeah, here we go. However, I'm going to adjust my uh, my cross slide so I don't. That's too close to the to the chuck here. Well, that's too close to the chuck here for comfort. So I'm going to adjust some of these parameters so I get this right. Okay, I believe we are at a moment of truth and so I have paused. I, I have cut threads into the interior of the brass nut. By my calculations, those internal threads should fit the external threads of my brass bolt. Can I tell you what I went through to get here? I mean, there's what you saw on camera, but then there was even more. For instance, at one point, I was a little greedy and I broke the tip off my 30 degree internal cutting tool and reground it and got it back into the threads and gingerly creeped up on. Yeah, um, look, every new skill comes with, let us think of a new skill as a new land one is visiting. And in that land, there are arid hills and verdant valleys. And let's just say that the landscape of thread cutting is a rough, a rough terrain, man. I went through some rough things here. <sighs> Look, every thread cutting expert who might have suffered through watching me screw up um, is, no, I believe knows my pain. I believe this is how we acquire knowledge. It's not easy. I don't necessarily enjoy the process, but I enjoy the process. Does that make sense? Look, uh, I just, I stopped because I think that this will really fit. Uh, so let's, um, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, dun, dun, dun. It's like the docking scene from 2001. And it's going, it's going, it's in, yeah! I am very excited. I'm very pleased. That was not easy, but now when I clean my shop, it will be with the knowledge that I have cut an internal and an external thread. <sighs> All right, I have a little bit more work to do. I gotta cut some chamfers on that nut and then I gotta polish this all up, but uh, let's wrap this one day build up, man. <laughs> Here we go. I will be honest with you about this build. Uh, the mistakes I made in the first day of this build, I was upset with myself. I was angry while I was upset, while I was angry, while I did not want what happened to have happened, I wasn't taking it personally. Skill acquisition is all about, always about making mistakes and learning how to look for those mistakes. Okay, that's enough of a tease. Let's have a reveal. 
three, two, one, ta-da! <laughs> I didn't expect that to land on my head. Oh, look, look at this beautiful thing. Look at this. Um, this polish, it looks really shiny on camera. Man, when you go to really polish something, boy, do you see the limitations of what is possible. Uh, so I uh, polished these up uh, on a sandpaper on a 400 grit on my uh, uh, reference surface on my uh, machining stone. So it's perfectly flat. Uh, and after 400 grit, I went to a 600 grit stone and then a 1000 grit stone. And then I hit it on the polishing wheel. And uh, let us, oh, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the two, the nut and the nut head are not the same size. That is something I am willing to live with. I am very pleased with this. I did want to do a project that took my machining to the next level and boy, did this project do exactly that. It was a real ass kicker. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. I kind of hope the next one goes a little smoother. See you guys next time. Hey, thank you so much for watching that entire video. You are amazing. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that you can now show your tested solidarity with some tested merch like this beautiful, beautiful drawing of the rickshaw that I built for Spot. This drawing was made in conjunction with the artists at Teespring and you can buy the t-shirt in the link down below. Um, yeah, I didn't know that my life was incomplete without a funereal charnel black Victorian rickshaw to be dragged by my robot dog and yet that was the case. And now you can have your own piece of this lovely lovely carriage uh, and wear it on your body. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time.